This is Snake. Can you hear me? Good. The mission is simple. Put your geek pants on and infiltrate Foxhound. If you need backup, contact Ken and Chris on their codec frequency. Ready? Snake out. All right. All right. I guess we have to start this like we hadn't been just doing one already, right? Right, exactly. Because uh, we were just, it just happens that we're wearing the same clothes again. Yeah, Huge we're not we're not shooting a bunch of episodes. No, in I mean it's December. December is not a busy month for anyone, so it makes sense for us to not shoot more than one episode right. in a row. And then just like routinely wear the same clothes, coincidentally on every Wednesday or so, whenever this gets released. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Maybe Fridays. Yeah, that way I can compete against Spider Man so and Aquaman. What we should be saying at this point is, hey everybody, welcome back to the Geek Pants Campcast. Oh, hello. And before I forget, a shout out to a one Alexander Daniels, who I work with at the the Center of Power. The Center of Power. Mm, that makes that it sound really correct. religious. I actually, yeah, that almost sounds like scary enough where people are like, "Wait, the Center of Power? Where do I join? How much money do I have to give yes. to find the Center of Power? The, the Center Secret of Power? Of power. Well, at certain levels, I will tell you, and at other levels, once you pay more money, mm -hmm. which isn't Scientology at all. But hello, Alexander. Cheers. Cheers, mate. So, this episode, this episode I think is going to be really fun. This episode, because is, yeah, I'm fun. We're going to be doing a, like a movie. First of all, we've done horror movies in the past. Yeah. But we haven't done a Korean horror movie ever. Right. And I'm really excited because, you know, we're going to look like really ignorant Canadians that can't say anything properly. I don't know. I think, I think I'll think i be okay. You're going to be try. okay. Okay. I'm going to try. I'm going to butcher it and then you can correct me. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is we're just going to try our best. All right. Okay. We're going to try our best because... Because Mama how? said try your best always. That's right. That's right. And uh, Mama, Mama said uh, alligators are ornery. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, what is it? They're going to... Medulla Abangabla. I can't remember <laughs> Medula. that fucking water boy quote. <laughs> Some kind of. Oh, quick question change. for you. Hey, when's the last time uh, you did your desk pop? My what? Your desk pop. My desk pop. Yeah, you know when you fire your gun off in the office. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason I ask is because I just recently watched the other guys. <laughs> and I'm uh, fucking losing it. Another shout out, Steve Baylock. He'll never watch this, but Steve Baylock mentioned that movie the other day, and I was like, oh my god, I haven't seen it forever. So what did I do? Looked it up on the Netflix, and I watched it. Steve, I would say hi to you, but you're not going to watch this. That's true. But you might as well say hi, just in Hi, case. and revoke. <laughs> nice. I like yeah, that. I like right. that. So, um, I'm actually really excited to start doing, like, other movies aside from white movies. Yeah. <laughs> Western <laughs> movies, I guess. We I are say. running out of superheroes. No, we're not. No, we're not. Marvel Universe, plus we can always just do like Daredevil, the seasons, all the MCU stuff, because they're all canned anyway. Mm -hmm. I think, really, we should start doing Daredevil, just because. I mean, we should. In memoriam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm bitter. I think every episode that we do, coincidentally spread out over mm -hmm. the course of a couple of weeks... We'll have some sort of mention of how I'm still pretty bitter and heartbroken, I guess. A little heartbroken yeah. <laughs> at the loss of Dead uh, Daredevil on the on the Netflix. This campcast has been brought to you by the letter I for I fucking hate Netflix. For me, it's I'm disappointed. Because mm. I'm still a big fan of Netflix. I mean, Big Mouth? You ever watch that show? I No, I haven't. But you know what I've been watching? Final Space, and it's amazing. Yes, Final Space so is good. so good. Mooncake? So good. Uh, oh, my God. Love it. And I literally just threw it on because I was like, you know what? Like, uh, It showed up on my feed. Yeah. Animated. Okay. And then like three episodes in, I was like, what the fuck? I think that's David Tennant being the voice of the bad guy. It sure is. Sure shit, it's David Tennant being the voice of the bad guy. Yeah. But the show itself is great. I can't it's wait so for the second It's so good because season. it's like, it's hilarious. But it's also really serious and dark. Yeah. And, it's, and, and epic. It's really, really it's got this well done. Crazy sense of epicness. And I just, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, it was so good. Uh, Big Mouth is also really good. Okay, I will check out Big Mouth. After Family is also really good. But mm -hmm. be prepared, Bill Burr does not cut back in the use of the word fuck. Oh. Prepared. So, Auntie Linda, maybe don't check out F is for Family. Mm hmm. Not that she would anyway. No. In any event. But you should watch this, Auntie Linda. 
because it is certified fresh by Rotten Tomatoes, which, as we all know, <laughs> means is nothing. A, hold on. No. Let me finish. The experts in movies, Rotten Tomatoes, so when it's certified fresh, Kenneth says it means nothing, but it actually means a lot to people who follow. <laughs> people that can't make up their own minds about movies. <laughs> yes. You yes. sheep. So, oh, coincidentally enough, uh, to keep the wrestling theme going, mm. strangely enough, weird. Daniel Bryan recently turned heel. I love it. Have you seen his promo from last night? No, I haven't seen that one yet. I mean, from last week. Uh, <laughs> two weeks ago. <laughs> no, it was last week. Last week but, or the two weeks ago. Wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. He literally cuts a promo about how they're sheep. Oh, yeah? And they're fickle. And he starts saying fickle a lot. Um, he talks about... That's a great word. Oh, yeah, it was great. He talks about other sheep. Um, and he's doing this whole, like, environmentalist slant where he's, like, uh, everyone's mad at him because he kicked AJ in the nuts when, which is ridiculous because people are destroying the earth with their mass consumption and they're, uh, like, meat eaters and, like, they're just pillaging the land. Oh, it's, oh, it's a riot. You gotta hear Yeah, okay, I'm gonna watch that. Oh. As soon as but you leave the house today. It's a revelation. That. I've always loved Daniel Bryan, but heal Daniel Bryan? New favorite. I'm going to go on YouTube and search that clip from two weeks ago. Yeah, or whatever. You know, whatever. I think anyone who watches us knows that uh, we uh, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. No. So We're not professionals. That's um, why we're not getting paid for This it. may or may not be pronounced Train de Busan. Yes. But I am pronouncing it Train de Busan because why wouldn't you? That sounds so much better. Busan just sounds like you should have a G on the end of it. Insane in the Busan? No. It's trained to Busan. Oh, train. Insane in the Busan. Train to Busan. I want it, I want the directed video B movie ripoff playing to Busan. It's funny that you actually mentioned that because I was thinking about this. Um, I think one of the reasons why this isn't like a uh, straight to video like B movie, as it like in the in America, yeah. this would be like a B slash C movie straight to the bowels of Netflix. Because it would have literally just been like, oh yeah, remember all those zombie movies that you see? Well, now they're on a train. Mm. They move really slow and they take a million years to turn into zombies. Uh, yeah, we also got the guy from Saved by the Bell to be in it. <clears throat> kind of like Sharknado. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whereas, like, in Korea, like, this guy is actually... Yeah, here. Um, what is his name? Mm, okay. The, uh... Try your best. Yugong. Okay, Yugong. so Yugong. that's got to be really close, if not bang and on. And his daughter is Suwon Kim. Okay, all right. all right. The tutorial I gave you earlier helped. Yes. This is going to be just a really embarrassing episode. Why is that? I won't be able to pronounce it hardly anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wrote, yeah, I never some, even I wrote some actor names down, and I'm just like, yeah. Well, here, let me see. Let me see if we, we've we got... Uh, try, try some of these. Yugong. Yeah. And Swan Kim. Oh, you... Dong Seok Ma. Okay. Wow. Sang Kwa. Uh, this one. Yu Sheng Kim. Mm -hmm. so I there... hope you get the part where I'm going through the names. You keep that in there. So, but anyway, he's actually a fairly big name in Korean cinema. I Rightfully only so. know this because I've seen him in enough Korean. Th that that's right. I, I watch Korean movies. I watch a shit ton of movies. You know what? As okay? far as movies from Asia go. Korean are my favorite. I have to say, yeah, like uh, I it... prefer them over Japanese or over like the Hong Kong Chinese. But like mm. I just, especially their horror movies. Korea knows how to make a good horror movie. Korean horror flicks scare the fucking pants off me. Yeah, this wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, but it's intense though. But it is very. It's a suspenseful yeah. thriller. Um, but like I love the way. First and foremost, okay, so most zombie movies is they get bit, there's a significant time period in between where they're going to change and they do that whole thing where they try to hide it from people mm -hmm. and they're successful because it takes a while to change and then eventually they do. In this one, they're changing almost immediately. Yeah. Like within minutes. Yeah. Okay? Um, sometimes in seconds depending on the scene cuts, but yeah, like right away and it, looks like it's disgusting and painful like if they weren't they're in the process of dying as they're changing and then they're like contorting yeah and they're just like 
getting all gross. Like, it just looked horrible. It kind of reminded me of, uh, you ever watch American Werewolf in London? Yep. Okay. Love that movie. Yeah. It looked horrifying to turn into a werewolf. Never yeah. mind that this is all practical effects. Everything just snapping. And, and but breaking, like, yeah. arms, his shoulder blades, like, everything. Like, it didn't look like he, like, the Hulk, where he just turns into the Hulk, and he's just yeah. like, yeah. Rah. You know, or, like, painful, turns into a werewolf, awful. and you're just like, oh, yeah. Like, even, like, I remember watching uh, American Werewolf in Paris, and thinking they lose it because of the CGI aspects, for mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And two, it didn't look nearly as painful. Yeah. And I liked... It was weird that that struck a nerve with me, but I kind of thought that that would be one of those bittersweet things because if you think about it, how would it not be fucking painful? You're basically turning into, in some cases, three times your size. Mm -hmm. You're going from a human to a wolf man or yep. like a giant wolf like in... Because they never walked upright in uh, the American Werewolf series. They were on all fours. Yep. Bad Moon. Remember Bad Moon? Try not to. <laughs> Anyway. No, but Transformations, like, that was probably the best, still the best wolf transformation. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh. I, I love the one in Trick or Treat, though, where they rip their flesh and all the hair starts coming through the flesh. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I haven't watched awesome. Trick or Treat yet. It's awesome. That's really cool. Uh, Ginger Snaps is also really good. Ginger Snaps has a really good one. I really like Ginger Snaps. And I actually, I like the ones in the in Underworld, too. Yes, the Underworld, base, like, yeah. I thought that was, that also, like, it looked like it was going to fuck yeah. you up. Uh, Ginger Snaps, I think we should do that next. Absolutely. The whole trilogy? Whole trilogy. Because I watched all three. I loved all three. They're all amazing. Even though the third one was weird because the way they ended the second one, but... Well, the third one was like a prequel that takes place in the 1800s. But that's what I mean. Like, this one, and it was the so good. The second one ends, you're so just good. like... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And then they do a prequel, and you're like... Oh, 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 what about... Ah. So anyway. Yeah. So, Ginger Snaps as soon as we possibly can. Okay. Uh, because, yeah, I've been wanting Let's to... Let's do it now. No, okay. We can't. Okay. We can't. We can't. But Keep anyway, with so getting back to this, I love that it looks painful. Yep. Um, and everything about them is, it's gross. Like, it's just, they're running and they're twitching and they're like, just like, they're almost like the Rage guys in 28 Weeks Later, or 28 Days Later. Yes. Very similar to the Rage, uh, not necessarily zombies, but Ragers, I guess I'll call them. <laughs> the Ragers. That does sound funny. I like that, Yeah, actually. the Ragers, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a party. That's a wrestling tag team. Actually, it is. The Ragers versus Cryptic Bill Foster. <laughs> yeah. And his and partner, the Cryptic Crippler. <laughs> Guess who's the baby face? The Rangers. The Rangers. Of course, because they'll, they'll run to the ring. Yeah. They'll be like, yeah. Yeah. Hot pink tights. Yeah. Anyway. Ultimate Warrior without makeup. Or with makeup. Oh. Because why not? <laughs> Getting back to this. Yeah. So, um, I know, like, for a lot of people, like, watching movies like this is tough because of the subtitles. Or if you go with dubbing, some people like dubbing. I'm all for subtitles, but I think it's because I've been watching like Asian flicks for quite some time. I, I, I love the option of having an audio, uh, English audio track, just because if I'm doing something else. Well, yeah, and I agree. Obviously, when you're watching a movie with the original language and, and subtitles, you have to pay attention to the film. Yeah. You can't do anything else. No, and I agree. Like, I, I like the choice, too. Yeah. Um, everybody in this movie is great. Oh, absolutely. I like the chemistry between the father and the daughter, even though, like, this is that sort of, like, almost tired storyline. Like, that part I felt was a little tired, where it was just, like, the dad who works all the time, who pushed away his wife, yep. and is pushing away his daughter. You know what I mean? Like, that was kind of like, ah, uh, because the only reason why I kind of go, ah, uh, is because you knew how it was going to end. I mean, not well, necessarily, the, okay. but you know. The end surprised me, what I mean is, you know that they're going to have a bond forged because oh, of it. Oh, yes. You know? That. Like, you know, at some point, she's going to go, you know what, my dad's not so bad. Because he's going to go, yeah, yeah, hold on. The whole time, I was wrong. I, I should have just been doing it for her. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> uh, but what I, one of the things I really liked was there's a diverse amount of characters in here. And they actually are allowed to split off. So now you can actually go from uh, the younger crowd... That was almost in like that gang type thing, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, back to this guy and his daughter, and then to the other one, the the bigger dude, the muscle man, the muscle man. Who who who? Hang on, Dong Dong Se Dong Sok Ma as Sang Hua. Okay, so I'm the gonna, muscle. Here, hold on, hold okay. on. Uh, no. I'm gonna go ahead and say it's Dong Sok Ma. Sok Ma. There we go. A little bit more like that. Dong Sok Ma. I might as, be wrong. As, Just as, sort of clear. As Seng Hua? As Seng Hua. Seng Hua. Yeah. I might be pronouncing more Chinese. The, the muscle. 
He was awesome. He was great. He like he was like, so great. I enjoyed everything he was in. like. He kicked ass. He was just fantastic. I, he was so great. Awesome. Um, but even like the douchebag, like the villain, so to speak. Oh, hang on. Yeah, Usung Kim. Uh, that one I was like, that's a tough one. U- Usung Kim. Uh, Usung, Usung Kim. Usung Kim. Kim. I, that's what I was thinking too. He plays a truly despicable villain. He's such a piece of shit. I love hating him. He was so. I hated hating. that guy so much. I was like, oh my god, how he, could I hate you, you know more? What the thing is, is he. I hate him so much that I will remember his face. Yeah. And if I see him in any other movie, I'll go fuck you. <laughs> he could be like father of the year in this movie, and I'll be like, "There's something up with this guy." You are evil. I will never trust you again. Because, because that son of a bitch was like really dead set against letting the human, like the actual live people, into that part of the train. You know. Um, but they did so many cool things with the zombies and stuff like that. Like, even just, uh... Oh, when they were in the tunnel? And the zombies just kind of were like, um, uh, we don't really know what to do with them. Because they were just kind of, like, blinded. Yeah. And they were, like, climbing up on the uh, the shelves, getting around them. And then as soon as the light turned on, they were like, let's go to that, right? Yeah. That was really cool. So, like, they, they kind of did different things with zombies that... You hadn't seen before. I, I loved what they did in this movie with the zombies. Like, holy Even crap. Even just, uh... The, Edge of your seat the whole time. The amount of zombies that they use reminded me of, uh... What's that, uh... That video game that's coming out, that zombie game, Days... Oh, Days Gone? Days Gone, yeah, where there's just, like... Just, like, hordes? A massive wave of them. The, the game is gonna be terrible. I guarantee you that game is gonna bomb player. horribly. I've seen enough gameplay that I'm like, oh, it's pretty one note. Yeah. It's You're gonna have... I'm pretty sure I played that game like a hundred times. You're gonna have scenes where it's just relentless, relentless, relentless. Then it's gonna be quiet, maybe a little bit of character moments. Mm-hmm. Then it's gonna be right back into that, you know. And I mean, I played Last of Us. You really gotta do something better to top Last of Us. Yeah. You know, and Last of Us gameplay is nothing revolutionary. No. There's nothing revolutionary about uh, stealth slash action gameplay in that game at all with crafting. Oh, crafting. Love the crafting. But that story, holy shit. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait for Last of Us 2. Really can't wait. Another reason to get PS4 Pro. The Last Guardian, you know what? another reason to get PS4 Pro. I was Pro. kind of thinking, like, Last of Us ended the PS3 generation. <clears throat> Last of Us 2 is going to end the PS4 generation. Nope. Not yet. Oh, yeah. When's it coming out? Sony is actually skipping E3 next year. Because apparently they're going to be announcing something big come the fall. Because I've heard rumors. PS5. I've heard, yeah, but I'm also hearing like 2020, 2021. Right. It's 2019 right next year. That would make it. Shut the fuck up. Really? Yeah, that's right. It is. <laughs> totally. Because we are literally closing just, out 2018. PS4 just had its fifth birthday, and when you think about usual game cycles, it was six to seven years. That's right. Yeah, 67. Yeah. So that just means wow. I get to play Last of Us 2. You got a good lineup of games to play. Good lineup. Cinematography is amazing in this. It yeah. is so beautiful and so fluid. The way they keep up with the, the action, and the action's quick. Yeah. They do close ups. Yeah. They do far shots. And yeah, like, there's nothing slower prodding about anything in here. Like, even the slower moments is tense because you know at any point in time these things are going to show up. Yeah. And they're not going to show up with one or two, there's going to be at least 30 of them. Which I thought was really cool. But the other thing I liked was the subplot where his company is the company behind this. You know? Mm-hmm. So he keeps calling back and then they're literally like, yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're kind of fucked here. Yeah. And then he starts going, oh, geez, what could we do? And then eventually he's just like, right now it doesn't matter. Like, we have to, we have to get out of here. We have to get to safety. Um, that was really cool. Yeah, the cinematography, this is a beautiful movie. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful movie. Um, I don't think I noticed any cgi in this which i'm pretty sure if there is cgi it's 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 gonna be minimal like it's it, gonna be minimal lens, and it's gonna be good nice. because like the beauty part is, is you can tell like there's not a lot of budget to this mm-hmm. but it still looked big and epic and wide scale at the same time being so small and contained but like even uh, you had the like the the two older sisters yeah remember the two older sisters yep. and then the one they get separated and you're like rooting for them to get reunited, and then they kind of do, but it's so bittersweet because one of them is a zombie, and you're just like, oh, God, that's like, there's a gut punch there. 
The whole time I thought the uh, pregnant woman was going to get it. Yep. And I was glad that she didn't. Um, oh, such a good movie. Yeah, like, I just... I've watched a, quite a bit of zombie movies in my time. And I'm, I think one of the reasons why I like this one so much, too, is it came out of nowhere. It really did. And I mean, like, I've been pretty big on Korean films lately, so I'm keeping an eye on Korean Yeah, trailers. but I still gotta watch Snowpiercer. When I saw this come out, Snowpiercer was so damn good. Um, <clears throat> I actually... I gotta watch Soul Station. Oh, yeah. That's the that animated too. prequel to this. Okay, done. Animated done. prequel. In fact, I, uh... I imported the Korean release for this film just because Soul Station's on it. Because <laughs> I don't think it's actually available in North America. It's pretty much. Might not be. Um, I mean, like, I, I don't know how much else. Oh, oh, one of my favorite scenes is when he calls the ex-wife and she's turning on the phone. Yeah. Where it's just like, uh, I can't remember the exactly, but all of a sudden she's like, oh, that stupid bitch. And then you can just hear like, ah. I was like, oh. Oh, and he's got to, like, lie to her and just be like, oh, yeah, mommy's fine. But not at all. No. Like, oh, it's just crazy. Ugh. I don't know, man. Like, ah. I could watch this again and again. It was so great. Yeah. So great. I don't even want to spoil the ending. No. That's one of the few times but I'm not going to do a spoiler. It, it is another one of the gut punches of the film. Oh, it's, it is a gut punch and a half. Like, it's, but wow. Huh. Yep. Wow, so good! If you're if you're not really into international films, yeah, tr trust me. Watch this with English with the English language. The yeah, dubs. do the dub. Do the dub. Do the dub because voice acting is actually really good. Because another thing that's missing from this is like the 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 Korean humor that a lot of Korean films have that is totally opposite from what our yeah, humor is like. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So, like, when I watch a movie that has a lot of Korean humor, I'm kind of like, eh, it kind of takes me out of it a little bit. Well, I mean, that's the same thing with, like, Japanese, uh... Yeah, or no, same thing. Chi what is it? Japanese? Uh, one was... No, Shaolin Soccer was Chinese. Yeah. That's Hong Kong, so... Um, but yeah, even that one, or, like, Kung Fu Hustle? Yeah. There's stuff in the Kung Fu Hustle that most people will get if that's their first time watching a, yeah. a, a Kung Fu movie. That was a great movie, too. That is, that is a very good movie. I actually like that better than uh, Shaolin Soccer. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Top five Korean films of all time. Ah. Uh, oh, well, Old Boy. Yep. Actually, the whole... The whole Vengeance Trilogy. Vengeance Trilogy, because like, that was my first foray into Korean films. And that was the first time I went... Literally stepping out... Like, I mean, you don't think it's too much of a step out because you're like, well, I was already watching Japanese movies. I was already watching Chinese movies. But it is a different ballgame. It really is. Because Old Boy is fucked. Oh, um, yeah. I'd have to say Train to Busan and I uh, can't think of anything else. Oh, The Host. The Host. You like Old Boy, check out Stoker if you haven't seen it. Okay. That's uh, Park Chan Wook, the director. That's his one American film. Yeah? yeah. All right. I just have to double check something real quick. Good shit? How would you say that on camera? Oh, but I, yes, I might. Okay. Terribly. Okay. Well, Chris is gone. Not booping at all. <clears throat> I was going to say this for the end of the episode, but we'll do it right now since it's just, just you and I. Um, Shriek Pants. Shriek Pants. I'm making an announcement right now. Shriek Pants will be a podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. I'm going to kick that off in probably January of the new year. It is going to be bi-weekly, possibly weekly, depending on the news coming out that week. Um, but the whole show is going to revolve around horror on physical media. The horror movies that you love, especially independent horror, that you love on physical media. That means Blu-ray and uh, maybe DVD, 4K, UHD. I'm going to do uh, Worldwide. Um, and we're going to talk about the big horror movies coming out on physical media for that week. Shriek Pants coming in January. Very excited about this. I was saving this for the uh, Train to Busan episode since it's horror related. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. Shriek Pants. Pretty pumped. Um, but follow us on our social media pages. I will announce more about Shriek Pants, such as release date and uh, possibly length of each episode. It is going to be uh, 
podcast only, audio only, so I'm thinking probably 10 to 15 minutes per episode, somewhere in there, but I'm going to do bi-weekly for sure, and um, I would preferably like to do weekly, so maybe I'll just say we'll do weekly, and see how it rolls, but maybe bi-weekly, I don't know, I don't know if the Shriek Pants is happening, that is coming in January. There is also going to be a second podcast that I will be hosting, and I will announce that later on in the month. Um, I'm probably going to do that announcement right on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Uh, might throw a video up here, but in case I don't, check out our social media pages. The toilet is flushing. Well, I was hoping it would never come to that, but... I had to break the seal. It's all right. It's all right. You made me feel bad about it once. So now I can make you feel bad about it. That's true. It it's all right. Because I, I talked to our wonderful fan base out there. Oh, you did. I did. I announced Shriek Pants while you were gone. Oh, you did. I did. Ah, so uh, because I don't know what Shriek Pants is. Shriek Pants. I'm too dumb to put it together. Shriek Pants. Please Chris. explain that to me. Shriek Pants is going to be... I like um, that you went Chris. Chris. <laughs> Just chill out, man. I know you're excited, but just relax a little. Yeah, you're right. You're like, right. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah, holy shit. Shit. yeah right. I think I've got enough shit out, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Tree Pants is going to be a weekly podcast on iTunes and SoundCloud. It's going to be 10 to 15 minutes, probably per episode, and it's going to be about horror what? on physical media. No I'm going way. to talk about all of the physical releases, such as Blu-ray, 4K, Maybe DVD if I'm feeling up to it, because I hate DVD. But I'm going to talk about all the releases coming out that week worldwide. Whoa. Well. Weekly podcast, Chris. Good luck with that. Thank you. Kicking yes. off in January. Very nice thing nice. is, though, it's a podcast. Yeah. So it's just me, the mic, chatting about everything. Exactly. And then basically just post. I don't yeah. have to, you know, blow up a day of my life editing anything, really. That's right. That's perfect. Right? That is perfect. In Who knows? Of, Maybe I get one of those too. Maybe <laughs> you have a mic, and you have one mic, one voice. <laughs> I don't know the rest of that song. It was good. That's a good song, though. Good song. I'm not a big good fan. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. I do like a lot of rap, but that was one of those ones where I was like, okay, all right. That's a good song. So before you left on your vacation, I took a shit. Okay. Yeah. Went to the porcelain fo- throne. Uh, dropped off. Uh, I dropped some, uh, what is it, I, when I'm at work I go, uh, oh, he's just in the office dropping off some files. Oh. Ah. I think they're pretty big files, though. He might be a while. <laughs> or the old school racist one took the Cosby's to the pool. Yeah, I know. I was like, I know you want me to say that. I'm not going to say that. Yeah, one. well, I said it for you. Yeah, yeah. Or you could also say drop the kids off at the pool, just in general. You could. It just means You too. probably should. I yeah. probably should have. But here we are. But here I am. Here we are at the Geek Pants Camcast where we say things. Stupid Canadian white boy <laughs> in the wilderness. That's I don't right. know any better. With the igloos, with the, the mucklucks. That's the igloos, the mucklucks, the, the um, beluga whale blubber. Yeah, before on the you plus left. Side, though, on the plus side, though, I will say that it was a pretty good poop. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. How was our toilet paper? Uh, you know what? It was a uh, it was two ply, so yes. Um, kind of pillowy. Which is kind of nice. It's nice. I like the two ply. I don't like the one ply because your fingers go right through that. Well, shit. if if you do one ply in your own home, you hate yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I don't like the three ply. It's just it's too much ply. Because you need something to get in there right. with like a grip. You can't be sliding all around. Right. I feel I feel like it's just because it's going almost in. It's too just, fucking thick. It's almost just like you're gonna you're gonna slip and yeah. it's like poking through. It's the same thing. Yeah. Really? I know. Two ply. Yeah. That's where it's at. Glad we could uh, supply you with that tonight. <sighs> Hey, okay, so, good hospitality here yeah, you at know. the Chateau Levitsky. Thank you very much. But my top five Korean films, because before you left, you threw out the... The host. That's right. The host. I did my top five. The host. Yeah. My top five are this one right here, this magnificent film, and easily my favorite film about the train. I mean, you had to work really hard to pass Steven Seagal's Under Siege 2. Yes, thank you. Really hard. Thank you. But it did it. It because, did it. Because, like, I know that your dad's probably watching it going, like, if they don't mention Under Siege 2, yeah. seminal classic starring Steven Seagal, yes. I'm going to riot. 
<laughs> karate chops and roundhouse kicks yeah. for John Chuck Norris Levitsky. Mm-hmm. It's all wrestling mm-hmm. names tonight. Yeah. He loves that too. He loves that he calls him Chuck Norris on the on the message you left. Yeah. He tell me about the incident. Chris left me a message. Called me Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> they came to the store because they thought we sold video games. <laughs> I, I was like, oh my god, this is like, like I'm eating lunch, right? Yeah. It's just like, rest of the fire for customer service. So I come down and I'm like half eating my sandwich. I'm like, oh, hey, you're eating lunch. I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, it's okay. And of course, they don't talk to and stuff. And they're like, yeah, yeah um, well, I, I thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help. I had to. I had to leave the message. It was, yeah. it was just awesome. But, uh, well, that Chuck Norris thing, it'll be a long time before he oh, lays yeah. that down. Yeah. You know? Rest of his life, probably. Yeah, you know what I think he should do for Halloween? Chuck Norris? No, Walker, Texas Ranger. Stay with me here. <laughs> Which might as well be Chuck Norris, yeah. but still. <laughs> That's one of those TV shows where I, I, I'm afraid to watch it again as an adult because I think I might be like, this is dumb. I'm not going to watch This is a pile of fucking garbage. Mm-hmm. The Host, as you ah, mentioned. Man, the Host. Um, old Boy. Oh, yeah. Only because I haven't seen the other two. I've never seen the other two. They're they're really I've seen Old Boy like three or four times just because the cinematography is so damn amazing in it. That side scrolling scene. <laughs> never mind that one scene where he's Whoa. got the uh, hook edge of the hammer and then they do the dot dot yes. dot. Yes, yes. Just that alone, you're like, holy shit. So good. And so then good. like the evil layer at the end is mm-hmm. just gorgeous, like gloomy and gorgeous. But yeah, that movie's crazy good. The other two are also really good. Um, yeah, but like... But I feel like I watched the best of the three. You did. You, you 100% yeah. did. Mm-hmm. 100% did. There's no way around it. Because I think... Uh, is it... Uh, Sympathy for Lady Vengeance? Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah, because sim- it's Mr. It? Vengeance. Yeah. Right. Anyway, there's Vengeance. Two Vengeance movies. Yeah. It's the Vengeance trilogy. Yeah, the Vengeance trilogy. The other ones that aren't old boy are both good on their own right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think part of it is... Old Boy is so good that you'll you compare them all to Old Boy. Yeah. And because so that's the problem, right? Yeah, and because like you have that like fucking ten minute side scroller where you're just like it's brutal. Like I remember and I'm sure you've done this too with Old Boy, where now I'm comparing other action movies to that. And like it's not that Old Boy himself is like a martial arts master. He is not. No. He's just a dude. That was stuck in a apartment style prison yeah. for fifteen years. Who was just practiced like shadow boxing and punching the walls yeah. to strengthen himself up. Yeah, he gets fucking beaten in this movie. He's a pissed off dude with a hammer. He's pissed up. Oh man, when he gets that hammer though, and he starts smashing their feet. <laughs> Yeah, that scene. Oh, oh, just every single time, and I've watched that movie so many times. And I gotta tell you, like it, it's a great movie for one. Mm. Like, it's a really good movie. It's so much so, again, like with the the lead actor, and I, I wish I would remember his name, but when I see him in other movies, I immediately go, "Oh, old boy." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose feet are you gonna smash tonight? You're the old boy. I saw the devil. If you haven't oh. seen, if you haven't seen, I saw the Devil Chris. You gotta watch it. It's yeah, so good. That's right. It is. I wanted so to see good. that one. It takes like yes, I I, I remember the premise. Serial killer films yeah. and just blows it out of the water. Yeah, that's right. So amazing. And lastly, the Wailing. Yeah, I know you wanted. To, I was supposed to watch that. That, that is ago, one but... haunting film. Okay. And amazing again. Yeah, I have to watch that one. Too. It's almost three hours long. It doesn't feel that long. It is so Really? Great. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Really good. Yeah, I don't know. That's like, my top five. <clears throat> Koreans, uh, they really do know their fucking horror. They do. And they like different genres and different styles of it, too. Yeah. Like, this is more of a thriller, like a suspenseful thriller. Yeah, there's horror overtones because we're dealing with zombies. But I, there was never parts where I was like, holy shit. But there were parts where I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. You know, mm-hmm. like there was a whole bunch of that, uh, but yeah, the gut punch ending, like even though the gut punch ending is a gut punch ending, yeah, a fucking amazing movie, and I'm so glad I watched it. Um, yeah. Train to Busan? Busan. I think it is Busan. Like Busan, 
I, I, I'm thinking it's Busan. I feel like it's Train to Busan, but... For the people out there that are way smarter than us, let us know how to <laughs> yeah. say it. That's and, right. As well as all the names. Oh, yeah, by the way, they're remaking this. They're doing an American remake. And it pisses me off as it doesn't need it. No, it doesn't. This film is incredible. It does not need a shitty CGI-filled American remake. I felt the same remake. way when they did the Old Boy remake. Yeah. We sure. all know how that turned out. Sure, I was glad that they did Brolin, like Cass Brolin. I thought that was okay. Yeah. Although, I I would have liked if they got a guy who was a little bit more uglier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they tried to ugly a Brolin, but there's only so much you can uh, do. A bit, yeah. Whereas, like... Plus, it was a Spike Lee joint. Like, I didn't watch an old boy and go, you know what would be really great if Spike Lee remade this movie? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that part didn't really bother me. What bothered me was that, like... Well, to me, he's he's got a very, like... He's like Tarantino. He's got a very specific voice to his films. Yeah, but then you you watch Old Boy, and it didn't seem like he had that voice. No. Which is weird. It looked, I just thought he was a weird choice for directing that it, film. It just seemed weird. It almost seemed like the studio was like, Hey, yeah, let's do this. Uh, we want you to do it like this. Uh, you have to add that scene. But you got to make it different, but it's mm -hmm. got to be there. That kind of thing. Yeah. You know, the way it ends, you got to do that. But we got to yeah. make it our own. And like I said, like I remember we talked about this and I didn't finish it because I couldn't finish it. The Samuel L. Jackson stuff really pissed me off. I remember just being oh, like, yeah. oh, man. Out of all the movies for you not to be like over the top Sam Jackson. You don't really realize it, but he's like in every second film ever made. Yeah, yeah. We always give Nick uh, Nicholas Cage. Yeah. The illustrious Nicholas Cage. Oh. Such a hard time for being in every fucking movie he possibly can be. Yeah. But Sam Jackson's doing the same fucking thing. The only difference is he didn't have like this ultra public meltdown where he owed billions of dollars that we know about. Yeah. He might. <laughs> he stars in like a hundred movies a year. Plus, he finds time to read bedtime stories written for children. Yeah. Very vulgar bedtime stories. Yeah, that's true. Uh, same but never Bruce, Willis. Bruce Willis is the same thing. He's in like a million movies a year. Yeah. And, and you don't really realize it. And Sam Jackson is doing the same thing. He's not doing anything different. Mm -hmm. He's not like... When I see Sam Jackson in a movie, I don't go, Ooh, I wonder what character he's going to play. I wonder if after Glass, James McAvoy is going to get the bug and just be in 100 movies a year. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Because like what I was getting at was like when I see uh, Samuel L. Jackson, I would go... Which style of Samuel L. Jackson is he going to be? Is he going to be uh, the motherfucker Samuel L. Jackson? Is he going to be over the top, like in the spirit Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> Which, I got to say... I totally forgot about that. I got to say, was he Dr... He was the octopus or something like that? Something like that. And I remember just being like, you're the only interesting thing in this movie. Yeah. Because somebody had the brilliant idea to go, Hey, Frank Miller, you wrote 300. We made a million dollars off that movie. You wrote Sin City, you made a shit ton off that movie. Would you like to direct a movie and write it yourself? And he went, yeah, I'd like to do The Spirit. And they went, yeah, here's, here's the oh, bucket loads of Highly money. acclaimed comic book that people all around the world love? Yeah. Please butcher it. Yeah. Written by Will Eisner, who actually is now an, like a, a, a tro like a, an award it's that they award. will win. When they get that award, yeah. it's like the Will Eisner Spirit Award. Mm. Sure. Take that one. Write the script on your own. Mm -hmm. Take everything that you love about that character yeah. and grime up the shit about it. Make mm -hmm. sure to do it in black and white with splashes of color. Yes. That worked for Sin City. And who was the lead in that? Army Hammer? Was it Army Hammer? I for some reason I, I don't I don't know, but I remember just being like, Did you just get some random dude that sorta of, kinda of looked like he did in the comic books? Army the douche hammer. Ugh. I don't like Army Hammer. I don't like him even more now after his Stanley remarks. I just, I, I just <laughs> yeah. really hate that guy. I, you know what? Like, I, and I remember he was one of the ones that they were in talks to be Superman. Yeah. And I remember, well, I, like, immediately I was like, no. I'll tell you, if Army Hammer plays Superman, I'm not watching that Superman movie. Yeah, yeah, I probably wouldn't. I probably I don't like him. I, I don't like him at all. I don't think he's a good actor, and I don't like his face. <laughs> <laughs> I he's a nondescript like there's nothing stand out like I feel like when uh, when an actor plays Superman you should be like you look and go 
That oh Superman. Wow, you're Superman. Not like, oh hey, you've got a Superman T-shirt on. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Uh, I don't know if you watch Geek Pants, but this guy Chris Murphy, he's got a ton of Superman shirts just like that. So that's yeah. that's kind of cool. You'd be a way better Superman. <sighs> like fuck. Yeah. Uh, especially because now I'm, I'm starting to lose this guy. Yeah. How you doing that? Stop eating. Uh, well, you know, you uh, you change the way you're you're eating, right? So yes. uh, I'm doing what is called intermittent fasting. Mm. So there is an eight hour window. Okay. That's when I eat. Unless I'm drunk, then I'll eat. Yeah, then it's like fasting this. That's right. Boom. But that I try to keep down so to the middle. So you take an eight hour window, and that's the only time of the day you can eat. That's right. Oh. Yeah. Um, also, I'm working out regularly. Right. So that's also That nice. helps, definitely, yeah. yeah. You know the best part about getting a smaller belly? Hmm. Your dick looks bigger. Yeah! <laughs> yeah unless, like, you know, like, if you yeah. have a small penis. Like, yeah. I don't have a small penis. You don't? I have a huge... <laughs> You gotta shave a little too to help see it, or what? Because you're like freaking Billy Goat down there. Oh yeah, no, I keep it nice and clean. I want Michelle to know exactly where it is. <laughs> it's just all this hair and this nice clean patch. <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I, I do have sideburns, which I think is kind of funny. That, that's pretty. <laughs> the chin snap strap with like the littlest bit hanging out, like a little bit. That's also that's a tough one. Are you to trying to make it attractive or really gross? That's t- <laughs> that, I, sometimes I just get bored and I'm like, hey, well, it looks funny. <laughs> Half the time she doesn't notice. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. It's a soul patch. Yeah. I like just, that. Just that <laughs> little. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Hashtag. What do I do with my nuts? These pancakes are delicious.